What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Stock Pros Podcast. My name is Tony. Today, we're going to talk about the ARK ETFs and Kathy Woods. But first, please subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know what you think, if you have any questions. And also check out my links in the video description below. I have my course on Udemy on sale right now for the next four days at $9.99. Learn the ABCs of the stock market, how investing works, and coming up with a game plan to get started. So let's get into the topic of discussion, Kathy Woods and ARK. So the ARK ETFs have been some of the hottest ETFs on the market the last year. A lot of people are talking about them. And let's start off by talking about who Kathy Woods is first. She is actually the creator of ARK. So Kathy Woods is a 65-year-old woman with an estimated net worth of over $250 million. So Kathy has a Bachelor of Science degree in both finance and economics. So she's clearly very smart. She has over 30 years of experience in the world of finance and investing. She's worked with several major hedge funds and her last actual job was Alliance Bernstein, which she left in 2014 when she decided to create her own company called ARK. So Woods is a devout Christian and she named the company after the Ark of Covenant from the Bible. Just a fun fact I figured I'd throw in there. And ARK is an acronym for Active Research Knowledge. So ARK's sole goal is to invest in new technologies, emerging markets, the hottest trending companies, and companies that she believes or they believe will be the future 5, 10, 15 years from now. And they call this strategy a disruptive innovation strategy. That's a key phrase that I see all over their website, disrupt, disruptive innovation strategy. So I did go on their website to find a lot of this information as well as other various sources, but I found that going to the main source was the best way to go about this because I don't want to give you any wrong information. So ARC focuses on adding companies centered around artificial intelligence or AI, robotics, energy storage, DNA, sequencing, and also um, they've gotten into space exploration, crypto, and other various um, sectors of the market, a lot of new stuff. And they also focus a lot on blockchain technology as well, investing into companies like Coinbase. So ARK states on their website that the suggested time horizon for their ETFs is a seven year investment period. So they think they can outperform the overall stock market and benchmark indexes like the S&P 500 or the Russell's 2000 or VTI, which is a total market index. They think they can outperform these over a seven year uh, window period. And over the last seven years, the cornerstone ETF, ARKK or ARK Innovation ETF, the ticker symbol ARKK, they averaged around 39% annual return. And that is actually three times the average return per year of the S&P 500, which averages around 10%. So over the last seven years, they've done pretty incredible and they've managed to destroy the market benchmarks. But one thing to keep in mind is the fact that the S&P 500 has been around over 90 years and ARK has only been around for seven years. So it's still very, very early and very in the early stages of ARK innovation and the company itself. So we've seen the S&P 500 overcome recessions, bear markets, market crashes, major market crashes since the inception of the S&P 500. And ARK has only been around since 2014. So during that time, we've been on a historical long bull run. I mean, we've had over a decade of a bull run going right now. And it's still one of those things where all market indexes are still crashing all-time highs every week. Every week, it's a new all-time high. 
So it's yet to be seen how ARK will perform in a bear market. And the average bear market historically lasts about a year and a half. So until we see that happen, it's hard to really know how these types of uh, investments will do when stocks are actually trending down for a long period of time. Remember, it's always easier to pick stocks during a bull market. So if we look at just this year alone, if we look at just the returns from this year alone, ARC is actually down 4% for the, for the year. So for 2021, they're actually down 4% and the S&P 500 is up over 11% this year. So as of right now, the S&P 500 is outperforming ARC by over 15% on 2021. So over the last seven years, they've outperformed them. But this year, the S&P 500 is actually significantly outperforming ARC. So obviously, we're not even halfway through the year yet. So there's a lot of the year left to go. So we'll see how that plays out. So let's look at how these ETFs work. They have, a, they have over 10 different ETFs, and they actually do have mutual fund options as well, which I didn't know that until today. So they have an ETF for space exp exploration, genome sequencing, EVs or autonomous vehicles. They have, um, they have ones in crypto. They have 3D printing. They have a lot of different various industries and sectors of the market that are still very new. And they think that these sectors of the markets are going to be the future and they're going to blossom into huge returns. So the, there are two types of ETFs. There are actively managed ETFs and there are passively managed ETFs. All of ARK's ETFs are actively managed ETFs. So actively managed ETFs are ETFs that are buying and selling companies all the time. And these type of ETFs are better to have in a non-taxable account because anytime you're selling a company for a profit, you're going to have to pay taxes on that profit. So I'm not entirely sure how that's going to work at the end of the year when you're buying or you're, you're investing into an actively managed ETF where there's a lot of turnover. So that is something to consider. Obviously, it's not going to make a huge difference unless you have tens of thousands of dollars invested into these ETFs. Now, on ARK's website, they state that their turnover or their typical fund turnover is around 15% per year. So that's not a huge amount of turnover, but it is significantly more than a passively managed ETF. A passively managed ETF, they may... They might buy or sell new companies for the fund every quarter or every year, whereas an actively managed ETF, they can do it every day if they wanted to. So also the thing to consider with ARK ETFs is they do have higher expense ratios than passively managed ETFs. They're around 0.75 to 1% is what I see on average for all these different funds. So with a 1% ratio, you'll pay about $100 per year for every $10,000 you have invested, which isn't a lot, but over time, over the years with a lot of money invested, it could add up significantly. So that is something you wanna consider as well. But the thing is, if these, if these funds keep returning 40% per year, then it's well worth all these fees and it doesn't really matter that much. But the thing is, I don't know how, I don't know how it's going to be possible to replicate a 40% return per year. I love what ARK is doing. I just question how sustainable all of these returns are. And I also wonder how well these will perform during a bear market situation. So if you're someone with a low risk tolerance, maybe these aren't for you. But I would say my final take would be that these are the ultimate risk reward ETFs. Uh, they're more volatile, they're more high risk, but if you hold on to them for a long period of time and you ignore the ups and downs of the market, because most of it is just noise, it's not about one day returns or weekly returns or monthly returns, it's about zooming out and looking at the big picture 
and the long time horizon of several years. If you go, if you put some money into these ETFs and you don't worry about the ups and downs and you worry about years from now, then they could pay off huge, especially with those types of returns. So if the market continues to do well, I do personally believe that these ETFs are going to excel and they're going to do very well. If we do see a market correction or a market crash, which is entirely unpredictable and no one knows when that could happen, then maybe these will struggle and they will underperform the benchmark indexes. So it's all yet to be determined. It is, got, it is a high risk, high reward play. So that's something to keep in mind. And I think that's all that, that summarizes my thoughts on ARK and gives you all the information you need to know to make an informed decision before you start buying them. If you're someone that's already investing in them, I would say don't worry too much about the negative returns this year. Um, it's, it's more of zooming out and looking at the big picture, and that's what you need to focus on. So thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. I appreciate all the support. Please remember to subscribe, and until next time, thank you.